Go, Bert. There's to be no sleeping in this courtroom. Do you understand? CR 0034, State of Texas versus Alejandro Hernandez Trevino. Can I have the parties approach and announce for the record for the state? Brittany Mitchell for the state. Defense? Justin Gonzalez for the defendant. And are you Mr. Trevino? Yes, Your Honor. You entered a plea of no contest to count one on June 12, 2023. The court found there was sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court deferred finding of guilt as you had applied for deferred adjudication. And just one moment here. According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at a cap of 10 silent and the state is remaining silent on your application. Of course, they reserve the right to speak to factual issues. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report state? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. Any objections to the PSI report state? No. Defense? No objections. And the court has read the documents that were submitted by the defense without objection. And those were letters from family members and people who know Mr. Trevino. And also the court has reviewed the documentations from Texas A&M uh, University. And counsel, would you like the letters back or no? Yes. yes. And your honor, um, in the PSI report, it indicates that the victim's mother had not called back. The victim's mother did um, send a victim impact statement earlier this week. I wanted to make sure the court was in uh, possession of that addition. And the court does have that by email. Any objection to the court reviewing that defense? No, yeah. Okay. Right. Just Thank give you. me one moment. All right, the court has reviewed that. Uh, any other objections? to the PSI report state. No, Defense, any objections to the PSI report? No objections to the PSI report. All right, any witnesses by either party? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Defense, you may call your witness. Thank you. Um, I'd first like to call Pastor George Ramirez. All right. Jimena, send me here to be. Pastor George Ramirez. All right, can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. All right, you can lower your hand, state your name for the record. George M. Ramirez, Jr. All right, defense. Thank you. Can you please introduce yourself to the court and explain to the um, judge where you work? Yes, so my name is George M. Ramirez, Jr. I am a community pastor for a ministry called Immersion Outfitters on 1604 and Braun Road. And I serve as the leader for that ministry overseeing men and women's Bible studies and teachings. And uh, that's how I, I met Alejandro. Okay, and please explain to the court how you met Alejandro. Sure, so one of the ladies who comes to our women's study was a former coworker of his and had reached out and asked for prayer for Alejandro. And I uh, made contact with him. And for the last year, I've been meeting with him weekly, once a week, to counsel. And sir, um, can you tell us about your role Please explain to the judge what it is that you and Alejandro have been doing together for the past year. Absolutely. So again, in our meetings, you know, my counseling is build counseling with him. Um, you know, looking at the choice that he made and looking at uh, how to use the tools that God has given him to be able to uh, address those things, being very open in our conversation, and again, using the Bible as our guidance to counsel him. And so you are aware of the charges of why he's before the court today? I am, yes. Um, in the times that you've worked with him, has he ever denied um, what he did that day? No. Those days? Well, from the very beginning, he's been very honest about his poor choice. And it's and has made it even a point in every one of our meetings to not only pray for his situation, but for the, the victim as well in her family. And so in working with him, has he expressed remorse for his actions at that time? Very, very remorseful, repented, heart as well. 
uh, for that choice, yes. And together, have you guys been working towards um, ways to prevent anything like this from ever happening again? We have. We've, we've looked at also, you know, the tools that he has uh, and in looking at, you know, accountability, not only just on our one-on-one -on -one meetings, but even through some of the technology uh, as well. And are you, um, would you describe yourself as a person who's holding him accountable? I would, yes. Okay. And how so? Um, well, number one, and it's, it's something that I wanted to make note of, is I, I was a victim of this exact thing, which was very difficult to overcome. And again, knowing that uh, God has healed me and he can do that, and, and even to give me a heart to be able to reach out to someone who has caused pain to another person and help them as well. And have you seen in the past year positive changes yeah. with Alejandro? Very positive. He's opened up. He has shared a lot about what he has gone through. Um, and again, you know, regardless of the outcome of today, that he would continue on this path. And do you feel that he would be an excellent candidate for supervision and working in the community? I do. I think Alejandro would best it would best suit the community to be part of it and be productive. I, again, but I do understand it. And if the judge does grant that, will you continue working with Alejandro to hold him accountable for his actions? Absolutely. Um, number one, Alejandro is accountable himself, but as a support to him, I definitely would be there to have him and our men's group would love to have him weekly. Yeah. And when you met with him, did you meet with him um, just online through counseling or also in the home? No, we met personally. Majority of our meetings were in the home, although we did use Zoom and did do phone calls while well, I was, uh, I, I traveled to Africa as well. We have a ministry there. So when I was there, we did still continue to meet on Zoom. And so you've met his parents. I, I have, yes. And um, does he help in the care of his parents? He's a very vital role in the care of his father and his mother in the home. And so again, I think it would be best with supervision and that he would be able to be productive and help the family and all. Okay, thank you. I'll pass the witness. Um, State. Just briefly, um, what is the, the, I guess, the demographics of your church? Yes. All right, excuse me, everyone, make sure you whisper. No. So again, we have, we are primarily a men's ministry. We have about 200 members, um, but we also have a women's group that my wife leads. She's a pastor as well. And then we have a, a larger group in Africa, which is about 400 members in, in Liberia, West Africa. Are, are there children that attend your church? They are. We have youth groups, and myself and my wife, we do teach youth Bible studies as well. Is there a teen program, a young teen church program? Well, we, we designate it as youth, so that would be anywhere from fifth grade through high school. Okay. Kind of group. Yeah. And um, are, are there services where the uh, groups are intermingled, like a, a, a congregation co-ed or yes so we do have co-ed again we have leadership that um that helps and assist with co-ed uh bible studies and that's primarily what we do we don't have them uh segregated they are together okay uh no further questions all right anything else Nothing all right you may call your next witness um i call alejandro trevino all right can you raise your right hand do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes, Your Honor. All right, may you you may lower your hand. State your name for the record. Uh, Alejandro Hernandez Trevino. All right, defense. Thank you, Alejandro. Um, who are your parents? Uh, Ruben and Patricia Trevino. And are they here today in court with you? Yes, ma'am. And have they come to all of the court settings with you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Please um give the judge a little bit of information about your parents. Yes, um, they're, you know, wonderful. Um, uh, my dad, you know, has been a hard worker his whole life, um, has had major uh, bodily injury due to his, um, his work. Um, he's had back surgery, uh, two knee surgeries. Um, he's in, uh, in, uh, um, in to get a, a back, um, a new back surgery, hopefully um, a knee replacement. Uh, my mom, my mom uh, has uh, battled cancer, um, which was really hard, uh, um, and uh, she she beat it. But you know, every day, you know, you 
you uh, you just think, you know, and um, uh, they're they're the best things um, in this world, and um, you know, it hurts, you know, um, that I you know uh, hurt them, uh, but the you know um, I'm hopefully will continue to help them regardless of the time frame, but um, you know. So let me ask you this, sir. Um, do you currently live with them? Yes, ma'am. Do you help care for them? Yes, ma'am. Has your uh, father had physical falls where you've actually had to help pick them up and take them to a safe place? Yes, ma'am. All right. And you graduated high school. Mm -hmm. Um, what other degrees have you received? Uh, I have an associate's in engineering from um, um, Blinn College and a, um, a bachelor's degree in engineering from a University. Up until your arrest, were you working? Yes, ma'am. And then you lost that job when you were arrested, correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, you've been on bond conditions this entire time? Yes. Do you remember when you went on the monitor, what the date was? Uh, I think around May 16th. Okay. I believe. And was that full house arrest or partial house arrest? Uh, full house arrest. And to your knowledge, have there been any violations reported to the court while you've been on bond? No, ma'am. Now, uh, before we came up here today, did you review with me the PSI and TAP report? Yes, ma'am. Do you agree with everything that was written in there? Yes, ma'am. Um, if the judge is to give you and grant your application for deferred adjudication, are you willing to follow any and all conditions of the supervision? Any and everything. You understand that with the offense, no matter if the judge grants your application or if you're sent to prison, you will be having to comply with Chapter 62 for the rest of your life, correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, have you done your own research to understand what that's going to entail? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, now, specifically, after we reviewed the TAP evaluation and the PSI report, um, did I hand you the second document, the email from the victim's mother? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you review that letter? Yes. Were you aware of the mental health issues with the victim prior to your relationship with her? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. Did reading that open your eyes? Mm, yes. How so? Uh, you you don't think what your actions mean until you see it, and and I that hurts more than all of this. I I you know being responsible for those feelings and. And uh, um, that hurts because I don't want to be uh, responsible uh, for someone being in pain. I um, and uh, that hurts more than anything, and I am deeply sorry. And I just hope that, you know, God helps everyone and, um, you know, and. Um, now, when you say you don't want to be responsible, you understand you are responsible. Yes, ma'am. You're not denying anything. No, ma'am. And if the judge grants you your supervision or even if the judge does send you to prison, will you continue spending the rest of your life making up and feeling sorry for what you did? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'll pass the witness. Um, Your Honor, I have no questions. Okay. All right. And you were aware that the complainant was underage. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. Is there any other questions? There's no other questions and there's no other witnesses. Just argument. All right. The court will hear argument. And I appreciate your honesty. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, my client, the reason we submitted the documents to you is I've gone through all of the evidence with my client. So he is well aware of what was submitted in the plea agreement and the stipulations, as well as anything that was and everything that was conducted during the investigation. He has, Brittany. Oh, sorry. He has no 
questions or no disputes about anything that was presented. Um, even with me and our conversations, he was always very honest about his actions. Yes, he did know how old she was. Um, however, this to him, in his mind, even though she was younger, this was a relationship and he believed that. And then I believe it's even in either the prosecution guide or the later statement is the two of them had discussed everything, recognized that it was wrong, and then that's when everything ended. Um, he was later arrested. He was always honest about everything. Um, he is simply asking for the court's mercy in allowing him to go on to deferred adjudication. No matter what happens, he is always going to regret his decisions at that time. However, by granting his application, he'll be able to stay home. He'll be able to continue caring for his family. He'll be able to continue making amends there and receiving the treatment while he is on the supervision. And so that is what he is asking for. And he understands that that is asking a lot. He understands and recognizes the pain that he's put on everybody else, not just the victim, but also the victim's mother and her family. And he only hopes to be able to show you that he will be able to complete the supervision in a timely and orderly fashion and never come back in front of this court ever again. All right. Any closing? Your Honor, we're we're silent on ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're my silence. So, Mr. Trevino, I do appreciate the fact that you've done a lot of things to change yourself and work on yourself. The issue with this case and what sticks out in my mind, this is not an issue where you did not know she was underage. If this were an issue where you knew that or thought that she was of age, maybe I would be doing something differently. So I'm going to find you guilty. I'm going to require chapter 62 registration. There's to be no contact with the point complainant. I'm going to give you credit for any time served. I'm going to sentence you to five years in the prison. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. All right. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. And because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Okay. Yes, All right. We can go off the record. Um, I've had plenty of people to appear before me charged with an offense like this. And I will tell you, you are the first person who has truly acknowledged what they did was wrong and are actually working on bettering themselves. Good luck to you. Yes.